All right, so problem number one will be a particle equilibrium problem, so maybe something like this. <clears throat> Let's find the tension end cables A, B, A, C, and A, D, so that the ring at A remains in equilibrium. So if A remains in equilibrium, then all the forces at A need to equal zero. They need to equal zero in the X, in the Y, and the Z. So, so where I'm headed towards is I'm going to sum the forces in X, set that equal to zero. I'm going to sum the, all the forces in Y, set that equal to zero. I'm going to sum all the forces in Z, set that equal to zero. Uh, but before I do that, uh, for these 3D problems, the first thing I like to do is any of these forces that are kind of at some odd angle, let me just go ahead and, and look at that force by itself, go ahead and break it up into its X, Y, Z components as best I can do. Then maybe come back here, look at this force, go ahead and break it up into its X, Y, Z components as much as I can. Um, and then something like this force is already in its component. Let's maybe we'll go ahead and write it. So um, <clears throat> let me break all the forces into their components. So let me break forces into components. <clears throat> let me go ahead and say this force, uh, I don't know what we'll call it, A or, or weight or something. Let's call it weight. Uh, the weight of 300, let me go ahead and write it in its component form, negative 300 in the K. All right, and I'm going to kind of put a, maybe put a little star by that, negative 300 in the K. Uh, let's go ahead and look at this tension in cable AB because all of it is in the X direction, right? Tension is always pulling, and what am I looking at? I'm really looking at, at, uh, at the link A. It is pulling at A. It is, is pulling. You see why it's pulling this way right here? So the tension in AB, I don't know it, so I'll just leave that as its magnitude. I don't know, but I do know all of it is in the I direction. I, all right, put a little star by that. So, so now, when, then when I'm ready to sum the forces in the I direction, then I'll, I'll come back to that one. All right, so now the tension in AC, the tension in, in AD are, are a little bit more difficult, and maybe I'll color code this. Let's do the tension in AC right here. Let's write the tension in AC in its component form. What angles here are they giving you? Do you remember this? What angles here? What angles are those? Those are spherical angles, right? Do you see, do you see that 60 is the angle from the force to, not to the X, not to the Y, not to the Z. It's not a coordinate direction angle. It's not the angle to one of the coordinate axes. It's the angle to this uh, projection right here, the projection of almost the shadow of cable AC on the floor. Those are spherical angles. What do we do for spherical angles? I like to think of spherical angles <coughs> as two separate two-dimensional problems. Let's try this right here. First, I'm going to break this tension right here into this component and this component. And do you see that that's just a, a 2D triangle? That's just a triangle, right? And so this TAC, let's see, this component right here would be TAC sine 60. This component right here would be TAC cosine 60. So let's go ahead and do that. So maybe I'll kind of change this. All right, so first, I know that the Z component right here, is TAC sine 60. Uh, maybe I'll go ahead and, and write that as best I can, 0. 0.866 TAC. That is its Z component. And then the XY component is TAC cosine 60. And I like to go ahead and, you know, write as much 0.5 TAC is the XY. All right, and then what are we going to do? Now we're going to take this XY and break it up into its, that's the Y and that's the X, right? You see, this is a, just a 2D problem. Just a 2D problem. We're going to take this 0.5 TAC and break it up into its two components. 
So take this, and so the uh, T, A, C, let me start with this one. The Y component is going to be 0.5 T, A, C times, well, that I kind of drew on, on top of this, cosine of 30, right? Remember, this, whoops, this value right here, is TAC cosine C, is, is 0.5 TAC. This value right here would be 0.5 TAC cosine 30. So that would be uh, 0.5 TAC cosine 30.433 TAC. And TAC, let's see, the X component, I'll take that projection on the floor, and then the sine 30 is going to be the X component. So this would be um, 0.25 TAC. But remember that spherical angles, uh, you need to add in your own negative sign if it's negative. So is this one negative? Yes, yeah, yeah. Do you see that this, this is pulling back that way? So this Z component is up, Y component is over positive, but that X component is negative. So let, let me kind of combine these. Let, let me kind of regroup and reiterate. What did I just do? I just said that TAC is, let's see, the X component negative 0.5, sorry, negative 0.25, negative 0.25 TAC, oops, TAC. So that is the I component. Then positive 0.433 TAC, that is a J component, and positive 0.866 TAC, that is the K component. Let me put a little star by that, because now I've got that one broken into its components. So that, that was kind of a whole problem by itself, is just taking that uh, cable and using those spherical angles that were given to break it into its components. But now I've got it. So now when I'm ready to sum the forces in X or Y or Z, I know those components. Now, AD. Kind of do this in purple. AD right here. How can we break this one into its components? That 120 is the angle to X. That 60 is the angle to negative Y, but it's the angle to Y, right? That 45 is the angle to Z. The, what are those? Coordinate direction angles. What do we do for coordinate direction angles? F equals FU, where U is cosine alpha I plus cosine beta J plus cosine gamma K. Remember that? It's been a while since we've done that. Go back and review those, but I think that's kind of one of the easier angles. So I'm going to say TAD would be uh, some magnitude. Remember, F equals FU, so here's the magnitude right here. And the U is cosine alpha I. What is alpha? What is the angle to the x-axis? 120 degrees. Plus cosine beta J. All right, so this 60 is the angle to negative J. Uh, that means it is 120 to positive J. So I, I like to go ahead and put 120 right here. Our other option was, was to put negative cosine 60. Leave it as 60 and call it, so it is 60 to the negative J axis. So you could do either of those, right? Because your calculator, when you plug in cosine 120, your calculator is going to spit out negative, what, 0.5. Uh, but anyway, this is the way I like to do it. Measure all the coordinate direction angles to positive axes. And then plus cosine gamma. What is gamma? It is 45 degrees to the positive k direction. And so there, that is... Um, my TAD as, as best I can. And you, you should probably leave it right there, but I, I tend to like to go ahead and punch it into my calculator. Go ahead and give me, give me some significant figures, at least three, <coughs> maybe four, but at least three. This is 0.5 in the I minus, oops, minus 0.5 in the J plus 0.707 in the K, and then put a star by that. So that's the vector. Now, I, you know, I didn't know this, but I went ahead and did the angles as best I could. I went ahead and broke it into its components as best I could. Now I think I'm ready to sum the forces in X 
equals zero. To sum the forces in y equals zero. To sum the forces in z equals zero. Are y'all ready for that, right? We have broken up every force into its components as best we can. Now, let's sum the forces in the x direction. Sum the forces in the x direction. So that's in the x direction, negative 0.5 TAD. Uh, this one's in the x direction, negative 0.25 TAC. And then what else is in the x direction? Let's see, is this one? Yeah, right there. Uh, TAB, and that one is not. So TAB so plus TAB equals zero. I wish if I have one equation with one unknown that I can solve. Uh, that has three unknowns. Let me jump to summing the forces in Y. Maybe leave a little bit of room to, to come back and substitute and do your math. All right, what's in the Y direction? That one right there, negative 0.5 TAD. Uh, which one right here? Plus 0.433 TAC, 0.433 TAC. Uh, what else is in the y direction? That's that's actually it. That's actually it. All right there. So set that equal to zero. That was close to what well, has two unknowns. Uh, and now let me sum the forces in the z direction. That one right there, 0 0 0.707 TAD. <clears throat> this one, 0 0.866. So plus 0.866. T A C, uh, and then minus three hundred. I, I I tend to sometimes forget this weight. Kind of the easier they are, the easier they are to forget. Maybe. Um, all right, and so that is. Those are our equations, and we have three equations, three unknowns. We can solve three equations, three unknowns. How do we solve that? First, I like to hope and look for one equation, one unknown. Do we have that? No. Uh, then maybe do we have two equations, two unknowns? Yes. Yes. Right here. We've got two equations, two unknowns. So I would write one in terms of the other. So maybe right here I'd write TAC. So bring that over. Divide through by 0.433. 1.155 TAD. And then plug that in right there for TAC. I'll let you all do the math. Actually, no, I will do the math for us here. We'd have 0.707 TAD, and this one, 1.155 times 0.866, actually comes out to 1 TAD minus 300 equals 0. Maybe just bring that 300 to the other side of the equation. This is 1.707 TAD equals 300. So 300 divided by 1.707 TAD is 175.7. 175.7 pounds. That's one of my answers. I'd go back and plug this in uh, to right there or to up here. We should get the same answer for TAC. TAC, I've got 202.9. And then plug both of those back in to the x equation right here. Plug TAD in right there. Plug TAC in right there. Solve for TAB. TAB. And double check me on these. 138.6 pounds. Whew. That was, that was a good one. You know, but with these 3D equations, you can end up with three equations, three unknowns. You can end up with three equations, three unknowns. Um, need to be able to use sub. I like to use substitution. Need to be able to solve for those unknowns. Okay.